you know, um, you got that book. Pass me that Rospin book. I think it's in my bag. It should be in here. Um, England, London for that matter, should I say, is something else, man. It's It's been very educational, you know what I'm saying? And what I can say is that if you have not experienced it yourself, you know, and this is like, if, if this is your field of interest, you know what I mean? If you're studying city planning, if you want to study the energy of cities, if you want to study your adversary and how they plan, if, if you want to know why the people are in the bind that they're in and they can't seem to like shake that shit or get up out of it, you know, there's a science called geomancy. There's a science called, it might be in my bag, there's a science called necromancy. You know what I'm saying? And there's a good brother named, let me get that one too. There's a good brother named Ross Ben, who's part of our community, who has written a phenomenal book. You know, pass me, you can, it's a few of them books. Let me get the AA book too. Yeah, there's a brother that has written a phenomenal book, right? This book right here. Free your mind and your mind will follow, okay? This is about a legend, Ross Ben, all right? Shout out to Ross Ben. Shout out to Noble and Pooh as well. Because, you know, um, when we started doing our mound excursions in 2011, 20, yeah, about 2011, you know, that brother was instrumental. Shout out to the Ghetto Shaman, right? Yes. The Ghetto Shaman was the very first one to, uh, can you put, turn it off, I think? Ghetto Shaman was the very first one to bring us on mound excursions. You feel me? Um, Noble Land Pool and us, we went to Serpent Mound and put in some work. And Noble Land Pool has contributed um, some of his intellect to what Ross Ben has furthered in his phenomenal research, okay? This is a must get. This book is incredible, right? Again, this is for the people that are super studious metaphysicians. If you really wanna understand how the adversary is what's called mound gritting, trapping planetary ley line energy, what they call dragon's breath. You know what I'm saying? If you want to know how they're trapping, if you want to know why Philly's off the hook, if you want to know why DC's off the hook, if you want to know why a lot of people, a lot of places where you find melanated people with super duper, you know, heavy body counts and, you know what I'm saying, these shit seem like the gates of hell's been open. You need to research urban geomancy, you know what I'm saying? And you need to understand the science of these people's necromancy. Now, it all derives from their origin point, which was Rome, you know? And shout out to um, Anthony Browder, you know what I'm saying? And he does a phenomenal tour uh, where he brings people through DC, right? What he terms New Egypt, right? And I have been saying this for a while. I'm like, I get it, New Egypt. But even when they went into Egypt, they were looking to reestablish Rome, right? So the layout of D.C. that's mimicking Egypt is the Ptolemaic Egypt. It's not Kemet. It's Egypt. So the Ptolemies and the rest of them that was running up in Egypt, they were looking to reestablish Rome. Mm -hmm. These people are Romans. They're not fake Egyptians or none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? They're looking to tap into Nueva Roma, New Rome, the powers of Rome. These people pay Nova homage. Roma. Nova Roma, right? They're looking to tap into the energy of Rome, New Rome. You know what I mean? And the way that they're doing it is through their architectural designs and desecration of sacred sites when they get there, of the indigenous people. They destroy them sites and then they... um. They desecrate them by spilling blood on those particular sites, mm -hmm. right? Of people that they edify, right? Um, so, soldiers. hmm? Mostly soldiers. Yeah, mostly soldiers. So, yeah, Browder has it right, partially though, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not just, a, it's just the emphasis should not just be on Egypt or Kemet. America is a, uh, um, conglomeration 
of uh, uh, architectural wise, right? Because these are masons, you're going to get the comedic influences. You're going to get the Greek pantheon influences, you know, and we can say that a lot of that derived from Kemet when they came in and they learned, you know what I'm saying? You're going to get a lot of Moorish influence, you know, um, but ideologically, you're going to get the Greco-Roman um, uh, ideologies mixed in with the laws which have been influenced by uh, the ecclesiastic codes and shit like that and Babylonian stuff and things of that nature. You know, they're tapping into all of their ancient systems, right? And these are the things that they are attempting to resurrect and reaffirm in the quote-unquote new world. So this book lays out how they were utilizing the mound structure in Philadelphia, D.C., okay, and um, Richmond, in Rich Mound, Richmond, Virginia. These are the three examples that he used. I want to go back now and do the whole research about Atlanta because where we at in Atlanta off of Marlin Avenue, it's an entire mound structure. So the thing that qualifies a city to be the new Rome, it has to have seven hills. And when we talk about hills, we're talking about mound structures, you know? So uh, Benjamin Banneker Bay was able to identify the district, right? The area surrounding um, D.C. as being the perfect place to set up the district, you know what I'm saying? And that's how they popped that shit off. So the reason that they remain in power, the reason why, you know, their power is not just topical. It's not just surface. Ordained. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you're going to get some biscuits and run this motherfucker up out of here. No, they have tied, they have kind of like plugged into the planetary grid system, the energy of the grid. Like I, I travel through cities all the time and be like, this shit is magnificent. Like how did they do this in less than 200 years? Where these shit is megalithic fucking cities, you know what I mean? Uh, totally unidentifiable from what was going on 100 or 200 years prior to that. And they're tapping into these particular grid systems and they're disorientating the indigenous people of that region by destroying their power centers and their power centers were always tied in to their mound structures because you're telling me that you say what? That the people, the indigenous people have a symbiotic relationship with what? With earth. Mm -hmm. Right? You keep telling me that symbiotic people have a relationship with nature, with the earth. How is what I'm saying, right? So these people figured out the how. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was through the grid systems. Okay? In order for you to have a symbiotic relationship with the earth and the earth to be... Um, you know, giving you what you're looking for and what you need from it, then you have to tap into the energy of the earth. You have to tap into the power of the earth. And the ley lines is how the energy, right, the electromagnetic fields move through the earth, okay? And if you understand the principles of acupuncture, if you understand the principles of meridian points, right, if you understand the, the principles of strumming a string, the vibratory principles, if you disrupt it, if you jump on that particular, uh, that wave or that frequency, you can disrupt it. You know what I mean? You can take it over. You can co-opt it. And that's what's been done. So when you come to the UK, you can see that these smallest cities in the US are daughters to the mother. Yeah. The mother is fucking London. The, the mother is England. Yeah. Right? This is the empire. This is it. Don't fall for the other shit. You know, just because... You know what I'm saying? New York has the audacity to call itself the Empire State. That shit is a vessel state, okay? It's a vessel fucking state. Let's connect this matrix, this mound matrix. You know what I'm talking about? Now I understand what it is that we're doing. We're cre we, we are creating a grid. We are creating a magnetic grid by going on. Everybody that's all around the world is watching this. I promise you, when I finish this information I'm going to share, Tonight, and hopefully when you come and see this lecture on Monday, you're going to understand. No, on Tuesday. No, no, on Monday, because I'm leaving on Tuesday to go to the UK. But you'll understand why we're all connected. Shout out to Philadelphia. Look.
That's how the ancestors are working. Philadelphia is the main place where we're going to talk about these mounds and this energy that is the mystic, my, yes, mystic Philadelphia, Shaker Maxim in the building. Y'all know, I, 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 I slept on Philly. Now I understand your importance. West Los Angeles, Tucson, Arizona, Millville, New Jersey, North Carolina, Cleveland in the building. Okay. Repu what, what is that? Republican? Dominicana in the building. Oklahoma City in the building. These are all mound cities. All right. Houston in the building. b in the building. PA in the building. Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis where the kings are buried. Mound builder cities. All right. Scranton, PA. Louisville, Kentucky. Ottawa, Canada. Dallas, Texas. Uh, Gulf of Mexico. Mound cities. This is a matrix that we connect in Baltimore, Michigan, VA is going fast. Daytona Beach, Miami, Tucson, Arizona, Chicago. Wait till you hear about Chicago. All right. Y'all are y'all are lit too. VA by way of PA. VA is lit. Rich men, rich mound. You lit. PA, especially Pennsylvania. You're super lit. Texas, you're super lit. Louisiana, um, Poverty Point, Birds Mound, you're super lit. Netherlands, Sao Paulo, Brazil, you're super lit. Jersey City, New Orleans, you're super lit. Ohio, Ohio has 50,000 mounds there before they took them down. Ohio is lit. Ohio is where the giants come from. Temp, Arizona, Toronto, Canada, <laughs> Canada, you're lit. You know what I'm talking about? West Phoenix, Mobile, Mobile, Alabama, Alabama, super lit. Mississippi, super lit. We are connected we are connected by a global mound matrix. We have the opportunity to activate that global matrix. We are on ley lines. We are all connected through energy ley lines. That's why we're all powered up. Okay? That's why we're all powered up. Yes, Richmond is rich mound. Richmond is rich mound. Okay, they changed it to Richmond, but it's rich mound. Inside of the mounds with the riches. We're going to go into this tonight. Just give me a second. Let me warm up. Phoenix. All right. Phoenix in the building. All right. Will I be visiting other European countries? I'm going to France. I'm going to London, UK. Birmingham. Mondem. In it. I'm going to pull up. I'm on the road. Mondem. Mon, mon like red pill. Mon like blue pill. Cross the pond next week, you dig? You know what I'm talking about? Pulling up on the right side of the road. Fort Myers, Florida. Lit. Fort Myers. All the, everywhere where there's forts. Most likely they built them shits either on top of mounds or they erected the forts after they broke down the the uh the, they took the they desecrated the mounds and basically took over that ancestral land. Alright? Well, I visit the museum over there. More than likely. More than likely. I ain't doing no museum tours, but I'll be in the museum. DMV in the building. Douglasville, Georgia in the building. I don't know. Let, let's put that on the table because we have a pretty booked itinerary. When we come back to the UK for the second time, we'll be doing all of those things. Proper light. You dig? Isaiah talks about the mounds and the giants. Yes, he does. Brother Isaiah. Shout out to Isaiah the Duke of Tears. One of my teachers, Okay. When he gave me the game back in 2006, I was like, fuck is he talking about? I was kind of questionable when he was spitting that information out. But now I understand. I understand. <clears throat> California, Watts in the building. Atlanta, GA in the building. Fort McHenry, b -more, in the building. In the motherfucking building. <laughs> you know what I mean? In the motherfucking building. Salute to everybody. Love and light to the family. Like I said, when we do these roll calls, Myrtle Beach, VA, B more, Florida, um, Louisiana, when we do these roll calls, it's not for self aggrandizement. It's to show both us and me as well, and anybody else that's tapped in, that we are connected. We are the global mound matrix okay they might have usurped our mounds they may have basically took 
our um our mounds out of commission but we are the living mounds we have it inside of us we are those ancestors all right shout out to this is the book that i'm gonna read from free your mound and your mind will follow ross ben one of the illest books that i've read this year free your mound and your mind will follow. One of the best, one of the illest books that I read in five years. That's a fact. Not the best, best, but one of the illest books. So, so life force or prana supplies energy directly to the brain. Life force is the intelligent power that converts food matter, oxygen, and sunshine into living matter. Translation, life energy, which is the sustainer of life. If you niggas live in Florida, Miami to be exact, Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, y'all should be teaching us. If you live anywhere that's motherfucking tropic underneath the sun and you got water and you got fruits that you could grow in your backyard, you should be teaching us at this point because you are on a very powerful grid. The reason why the brothers and sisters in Florida are in the situation that they're in is because they're so powerful, they're so magnetic, they have so much potential, but they're under a motherfucking spell because of the fact that these colonists have conquered the natural environments that they live in and they've cast it almost like a hypnotic spell on that whole region. I'm going to break it down in a minute. Right? If you in... If you're on the West Coast, if you're on the West Coast, you, you should be teaching us. Then, like when Blue Pill was on the West Coast, he would often speak about how they do spirituality out there. And out there, it's all about abundance. Like on the West Coast, right? L.A., Cali, you know, what I'm talking about Vegas, Arizona. They about abundance out there because they're tapping in to the quote-unquote surround they're they're tapping in to the life force right the life force the oxygen right a mountainous region the, the air they, they're up in the mountains the sunshine when i was in la my dna was shifting i was a different person the shit that la is good to me la is good for me because the way that my dna is lined up the way that my dna is set up Everything, my whole matrix gets upgraded when I tap into certain grids or certain ley lines or certain energy centers based off of my ancestry, based off of where the fuck I come from. My shit upgrades. So the reason why I travel so much, the reason why I'm navigating the globe is because I'm reconnecting my DNA to the places where the shit is supposed to be. Where it, because I turn grids on. I turn them on. Okay? When we go places and we teach and we go places and we do our rituals or our ceremonies, nigga, we activate grids. You should learn how to get into that as well. Bring your crystals with you. Bring your motherfucking A game with you. And bring, you know, <clears throat> you might want to bring a, uh, you know... Bring your bring your gold water with you and just leave it like that. You know what I mean? Bring your gold water with you. But anything that conducts energy, bring it with you. You know what I'm talking about? And you could turn the grids on with your demonstration. You know how certain rappers got their whole city lit? Niggas never heard of nigga city before. Like... What, you know, the Carolinas wasn't lit before like that, like that. But that shit is lit right now. J. Cole, the baby, uh, he has his little crew. What's the name of them? The J. Cole crew, right? Um, it's like two other people, right? And they got their whole shit lit. So when you go there, when you go to the certain states that are that are energized and magnetic, the minute you get there. You be like, oh, not Petey Pablo. I'm talking about recent artists. <laughs> the niggas right now, they got it lit. Not Petey Pablo. I don't know if he's popping right now. Dreamville. Yeah, Dreamville. So when you go to those states, you could feel the magnetic energy in those states 
the little brother, yeah, little brother, um, Rhapsody, right? Rhapsody is popping, little brother's popping, Dreamville is popping, the baby is popping. They got that whole shit lit. Earth Gang is popping. They got the whole shit lit. And when you go to North Carolina, you're gonna feel the charge. Be like, damn, this shit is electric. I feel like I feel like Diddy bopping. You know what I'm Knife Wonder? I feel like Diddy bopping. Oh, Ari Lennox, who did Shea Butter Baby, she from there? Yeah, that's Bay right there. <laughs> Holla Black, that's Bay. I like her. So, to the degree that a person is magnetically attuned to his or her environment, he or she will be spiritually informed and intuitively enlightened. To the degree a person is magnetically misaligned, he or she will be spiritually disconnected from creation. Do you not see that taking place in these streets these days? These niggas are disaligned. They're magnetically, they're demagnified, and they are out here in motherfucking limbo, living in a bizarro world, basically just in the sunken place. Okay? So... The subtler, the subtler informs the denser. Okay, the su the subtle, the subtle informs the denser. Let me share this with you. Gravito magnetic fields from nature feed our spirit. Our spirit is our life force energy expressed as consciousness. Spirituality is expressed by our consciousness connecting with the magnetic fields, which is the life force energy in our environment. Spirituality, talk black to me, is experienced by our consciousness connecting with the magnetic fields or the life force energy in our environment. If you living in a brick in a concrete jungle, if you living in a city like I am, I'm living in New York City, the concrete jungle of all concrete jungles, which happens to be built on top of ancient mound civilizations. If you Google right now, New York underground or cities underneath New York, you will see that the city that I'm on, the city that I live on, we're 1,000 feet above the quote-unquote, uh, uh, the, 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 the quote-unquote original land. You understand? We're hundreds of feet above the original land. They build cities on top of ancient cities, right? So... Manhattan, like I said on last episode, Manhattan is Manhattan now. But that is a sacred, that is a sacred, that's sacred grounds with sacred mounds. Okay? So, if you live in the South, right? If you live in the South, shout out to all of my family in the South, in the Gulf Coast, Gulf Coast region. I was just in Texas. I loved it out there. I was in nature. You understand? I was in Atlanta. I love it in Atlanta. I love it in Georgia. I love it in the Carolinas. I love being in the South because my consciousness is being fed by the life force energy in the nature. Even when I, that's why I don't like when I go down South, niggas is like, oh, why are you on a China bus? That takes too long. I wrote some of my best lyrics. I've come up with some of my best ideas. I've been able to uh, conceptualize some of my best moves on the ancient trails. Because when I-95 is an ancient trail, my nigga. Okay, that's the ancient trails. So even if I'm on a bus, even if I'm in a car, whatever I'm in, I'm going down the ancient trails through nature. I'm, 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 I'm looking at the sunrise. You dig what I'm saying? I'm taking all of that in and I'm utilizing that for creative purposes. I'm not just on a bus sleeping, my nigga. You know what I'm talking about? Or sitting around talking to crackheads and thoughts. Nigga, I'm on a bus or I'm in a car and whatnot. 
I'm in a creative mind state. I'm in a, a walking meditation. I'm in a meditative state. Usually, I'm on a, you know, I'm, 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 I'm high out of my mind. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm, I'm just, I'm zoning out. I'm zoning out. And them forests and them trees and that and that, and that beautiful foliage and whatnot, all of that is feeding my prana. I'm breathing and whatnot. I hope that the bathroom is not messed up on the bus because it's going to interrupt the breathing. But, you know, I'm trying to breathe correctly and I'm tapping in. And that right there, my friends, like I said, this is all personal. I don't know. Some of you niggas is from Alaska. Some of y'all are from different countries or different planets. So I don't know. We, you know what I'm saying? I know what works for me. So I'm just sharing what works for me. So look. By connecting with the magnetic fields of one's environment, one's spiritual body magnetic field is strengthened. One of the reasons why the family who was from down south, right, lived longer and were physically more built and physically stronger than their ancestors or their relatives who went to the, live in the big cities is because of the simple fact that they were tapped in to their natural environments. And their natural environments were feeding their spirit. And their natural environments were feeding their life energy. That's why you have Nana and all of them who eat mad hog and whatnot. They eating chitlins and all of that. And they living to be 100 years old. They're in a natural environment. They're in a place where their life, their life prana, they're magnetized still and all. All of that Jesus shit is still magnetized. They're magnetic. So they're like, oh, Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus paid my rent. Jesus come through, you know what I mean? Jesus help me get this this fucking uh this 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 mansion and whatnot. No, my nigga. You just magnetic. You know what I'm talking about? You wild magnetic. Y'all inside of this church and whatnot. That shit is magnetic. They playing organs. That shit is magnetic. You know what I mean? Y'all in a euph euphoric state. Y'all jumping for that white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. That shit is magnetic. So there's all kind of ion the ionosphere is charged up. And you could create in a charged up ionosphere. I said it before. You could charge people could create in a strip club. The strip club is charged up with a with a negative ionosphere. The nightclub, the discotheque, is charged up. There is an ionosphere. There's a ceremony taking place with drums, with motherfucking spirits, which is liquor, with sacraments, and with sexual energy. These hoes out here shaking that ass, okay? They in a strip club twerking and letting it go. They butt ass naked and niggas prana and they motherfucking creative energies and their creative faculties is on fleek. And it's a creative space. It is a creative space, although it is of a lower frequency, okay? Although it is of a lower frequency, it does not matter. You cannot bring Christian morals into science. It don't fit. So what I'm saying is what people know and what you obviously don't know is that these sciences obey the motherfucking science. They don't obey how you feel. They could give a fuck how you feel. They say fuck your feelings. Nigga, if you do the proper work, if you lay it out, if you have the proper ingredients, the cake will be baked. That's how it works. So, there's a principle in creation. The subtle informs the denser. Subtler frequencies give shape and form to denser frequencies. One spirit body, his or her magnetic field, is their subtlest frequency. If healthy and strong, it will resonate at 7.88 hertz per second. So, when you want to find out if you're at your optimal health, you have to figure out if you're resonating at 7.8 or 8 hertz. Sisters, before you let that nigga slide in, you know what I'm talking about? Before you let that nigga, uh, you know, hop in and, 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 and take you on an Uber ride. Before you let him into your pearly gates, my nigga. Find out what he, what, find out what his, what, what his fucking hertz is. Find out how, what he's resonating at. You know what I'm talking about? If he's at 7.8 or is he's at 4.4, you know? Y'all letting these zombies and these dead niggas dick you down and whatnot and wonder why your magic don't work and wonder why you losing your magnetism and wonder why you losing your goddesshood. You going from goddess to goddess. And then after that, it's downhill from there. 
It's downhill from there. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody wants to know the book name. Free your mound and your mind will follow. Ross Ben, www.rossben.com. I don't think Mon put it on Amazon. Go and get it off his website. Free your mound and your mind will follow. And you know, just, just we're moving into a different place in 44. That year is going to be monumental. You know what I'm saying? That's when we're going to separate from the pack. And no disrespect to the pack. I'm just saying, you know, now it's about enclosing legacy. It's about, you know, creating those projects that are going to be 100 to 500 year product projects. You know what I'm saying? Like really laying this shit down. Like really putting a different level of life force into these projects. You know, um... Cause I'm just inspired. I'm gratified. I'm inspired. I'm thankful, you know, and I, I know I can see that what we have been doing works, you know what I'm saying? So to get that confirmation, to get that affirmation, you know what I'm saying? To get the blessings of the queen and all of that to go forward, man, this is a global, you know, I, I, I don't use the word struggle. This is a global campaign. You know what I'm saying? to unify people or the people or the people that resonate with this information and this message, you know, to unify the people around a power nexus, you know, where, you know, these are people that self-identify themselves with greatness. You know what I'm saying? Not, not, not the other shit. I don't even want to talk about juries in Texas and none of that. That's not even, you know, Red might want to talk about that, but... I don't even want to get to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you already know what time it is. You feel me? You know what time it is. So that ain't who I'm talking to. I'm not talking to that energy. I ain't talking to people that, you know, that's their frequency. You just got to let bygones be bygones at the end of the day. You feel me? So, yeah, man. This is a, a wonderful, magnificent queen. The sister's amazing. Her story is amazing. You're going to be seeing a lot more and you know you're gonna be seeing a lot more of her you're gonna be hearing a lot more from her all right she's locked in that's family yeah um yes kt will be conducting island retreats in 2020 he'll be back kt is doing an event november third no we're doing the third he's doing november 10th right with king simon he's going to be doing something um based on health right at at the King Simon Lecture in New York, right? Like I said, the 5G book, 5G wellness. You feel me? Gotta get that. They got yeah, 5G got out here. Gotta get, they got the 5Gs popping out here already in the UK. So we got to bring more devices out here to help them counter that. Shout out to 19 Keys. He has the crowns with the EMF technology in it. You know what I'm saying? This book right here. Revealing America's dark skin past. All right. Brother A. A. Rashid. All of his books. All right. <coughs> like I said, anything from Ross Ben at this point. He's on one. He's on fire. <laughs> Brother's on fire. The spiritual magnetic fields informs the next body. So do you understand what I'm breaking down? I'm saying that higher frequencies inform lower frequencies and not the other way around. It is a law. It is a spiritual, it is a, it's a, it's a universal law, all right? So this spiritual magnetic fields informs the next denser body. The mental body of or your mind how magnetic are your thoughts? How magnetic are your thoughts? Does the optimal vision of life manifest or remain an unrealized dream? Can you manifest thought? Can you manifest your mind's eye? What you see in your mind's eye, can you bring it into fruition? If you cannot do that, you should be focusing on how to do that. Because if you can do that, Case in, if you can do that, that means that you are very magnetic and you are operating on a 7.8 or 8 hertz and whatnot, and you are in alignment. Okay? To the degree 
one's mind magnetizes and magnifies the magnificent of one's imagination magnetically, their mental body will be strong and healthy to the degree one's imagine, imaginative mental magnetic field is incongruent with the magnetized manifested reality within his or her environment, there will be disillusion. The subtle informs the dense. The magnificent or delusions of one's mind feeds the next denser body, the emotional self. So we were talking about the mental self. The mental self feeds the emotional self. The feelings and urges that often impel action are informed by how we think, perceive, and cognate. Control of emotions is vital to self-control. Without self-control, one is susceptible to the control of others. I'm going to pause that right there and I'm going to just say this. They be like, yo, how you, why you be going so hard on, on, on the thoughts? Why you be going so hard on the sex workers? Why you be going so hard on the strippers? Why you be going so hard on people living sexual deviant lifestyles? Why you be going so hard on a rainbow suit? Because. Because. Control of emotions is vital to self-control. And without self-control, one is susceptible to the control of others. Meaning that if you don't have no self-control, you're trash. You're just going to be a tool for somebody else. You don't control yourself. You're not in the driver's seat. So controlling oneself and having control of your mind and having control of your mental and having control of your emotions are tantamount in this quote unquote journey that we're on. This is boot camp. I'm just trying to give you some tough love. You know what I'm saying? I don't hate you. I got love for everybody. But this is boot camp. You know what I'm saying? As I say it to you, I'm looking at myself and I'm saying it to me too. I'm not no fucking shogun. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no fucking monk, my nigga. I'm still fighting every day. It's a day by day thing. But I know from personal experience, if you don't have control of your faculties, you are going to get washed in this tsunami of ignorance and fuckery that exists all around us. I promise you that. So... The, su the, su the subtle informs the denser to the degree one is in control of his or her emotions is the degree to which one is in control of their body and actions. Do you want a girlfriend who's not in control of her emotions? Do you want a girlfriend or a wife who's not in control of her mind? Do you want a husband or a bae? Who's not in control of their mind and their emotions. Chances are they could be remotely controlled by love and hip hop. Chances are they could be remotely controlled by anybody. Meg Thee Stallion, Cardi B, Nicki Minaj. They could be a low key Barbie. You know what I'm saying? Being controlled by somebody's tweets. That shit is whack. That's crazy. And that's what we see in these streets. Niggas grandmothers is wearing uh, pink and orange and green wigs. They're not in control of their cells. Okay, that's not a conscious decision that they just woke up one day and was like, I'm going to wear pink yoga pants at 58 or 63 and a fucking pink wig with snuffleupagus eyelashes and trying to keep up with Cardi B. Nigga, that's not her. It's not her. She's gone. She's like a pod person right now. Somebody's controlling granny. If another person can trigger certain emotions, that person can impel emotional responses and thus influence one's behavior. Why we stress and why we teach because somebody was like, Red Pill, you shouldn't be teaching about white people that much because, you know, you don't want to focus on the enemy. I was like, nigga, have a seat. 
What I want to help my people do is stop making them so reactionary. One of the reasons why the PSYOPs, one of the reasons why they have our people dying in social media showing the police killing us. One of the reasons why every fucking day there's a racial incident and all of the race baiters in our community are retweeting shit is because they want you to react. They want to control your emotions. And once they control your emotions, they got you. That's what this whole PSYOPs is about. Ever since Trayvon Martin was murdered, that was a grand ritual. They have been pulling out psychological operations on our people and controlling them like a herd of cattle. Controlling their every fucking move ever since then. They didn't have a control of our people like they have now. They are controlling our people. OK, so you have to get your mind back. You got to get your emotions back. Nigga, people die every day. You got to live like that. You can't get invested. And in, I get caught up sometimes, but then I got to snap back and be like, nah, I ain't getting emotionally invested in this shit. I'm not. Whoever died, they're good. They're all right. They, they in the ethers, like set up an altar and put in some real work for them. If you niggas want to cry crocodile tears, nigga, you know what you got to do. You know what you got to do. And it's not crying because that shit never hurt. It never solved anything. It never helped nobody. You know what I mean? All of that cry me a river, my nigga. No, you niggas need to study Harambe's code if you want to really put in some twerk. Other than that, keep it smoothing. Keep it moving. You know? So get take your emotions back. You didn't know those people. Take your emotions back. <laughs> and you don't know these people. You just see them on social media. They're not they're not gang gang. You don't know these people. So you all, oh, oh man. Oh my goodness. Oh God. God. Nigga, they got you. Because you didn't do nothing about it. You know? You ain't do nothing about it. You just cried about it. You know? And there's no power in crying. Them people is drinking your tears. And black tears are delicious. And it's a river of tears. You know what I'm talking about? It's a Nile River of tears. And your tears are delicious. They full of salt. They full of spices and, and all kind of adobe and, you know, other things, seasoning and shit like that. You know what I mean? People like those tears. They got melanin in them. You know, they drinking your tears. So if another person can trigger certain emotions, that other person can impel emotional responses and thus influence one's behavior. Right. They have black America in a state of cowardice now. Their behavior is being influenced. They got black America damn near taking a knee and, and, and basically pleading for their lives and cowering. Please don't do nothing to me. Niggas is going Takashi on us. And that's not what I was used to. That's not what I grew up on. I'm sorry. It's not the reality that I come from. Niggas was Vikings when I was younger. So the physical body is informed by emotions. The emotional body is informed by mind. The mental body is informed by spirit. The spiritual body is informed by magnetic fields in nature. So there are three sources of magnetic fields. Let's get into it. The terrestrial. The earth itself tends to be the primary source of natural magnetic fields. Magnetic fields pulsate through the earth's atmosphere with its highest concentration of charge manifesting in the ionosphere. The ionosphere is a bound of magnetically charged particles 60 miles above the surface. These magnetic fields radiate from various nodal points geometrically positioned around the globe and circulate through the atmosphere, ionosphere, to the magnetic poles of the planet at its north and south polar regions. Magnetic fields also pulsate through the Earth, radiating from the nodal points in the form of a geometric grid that manifest as ley lines that crisscross the globe. Translation. The magnetic fields. Have you ever seen the, uh, what is that? The, um, the northern lights, right? 
the magnetic fields, when you look at old drawings and whatnot in medieval times or enlightenment times and things of that nature, you're going to see them, even all you flat earthers and whatnot, you're going to see uh, diagrams of the earth with all of these lines coming out of it and whatnot. If you Google it, you'll see it right now. That's the magnetic fields of the planet. OK, certain birds and whatnot, uh, butterflies, bees and whatnot, they travel along the magnetic fields you know, okay okay serpents they travel along the magnetic fields even though you can't see it it don't mean nothing like i said niggas can't see a motherfucker two blocks away from them so what does that mean you cannot see the aura borealis, borealis the aura borealis right that's that that's that magnetic that's that energy so <sighs> The ley lines, like I said, when we, when I do roll call, every time I do roll call, I'm doing roll call for the purpose, the Schumann residence. Yes, the Schumann residence. I'm doing roll call for the purpose for what? I'm doing the roll calls, birds as well. Yes, birds follow the quote unquote magnetic fields and stuff like that. Fish and things of that nature as well when they do breeding, mating, seasons and all of that stuff. Monarch, butterflies, you name it. Okay? So when I do roll call, it's basically a terrestrial way of saying that we are all connecting by the nodes. We are all connected through the ley lines. And I'm going to show you not only are we connected through the ley lines, we are connected through the global mound matrix or what they call the pyramid matrix. Because the pyramids, if you think pyramid, think mound. You think pyramid, think mound. We are connected through a global pyramid mound matrix. And it is magnetic. Okay? It's magnetic. It's magnetic. So as above, so below, right? So we talked about the terrestrial, right? That's where you get extraterrestrial. Terrestrial means the terror. The, 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 I, I talk about the war on terror, but I'm explaining to the family that the war on terror is the war on terra firma, the war on a terrestrial, the war on the earth. That's why they got this little fucking child and all of these little kids talking about global warming. Nigga, global warming is white people destroying the planet. Fuck is you talking about? It's no such thing as global warming. It's called the war on terror. The war on the terra firma. The war on the planet Earth. The war on the grid. The war on the magnetic fields. The war on the motherfucking living planet on Gaia. Somebody needs to get that little fucking child off the goddamn stage because she only out there emoting. I don't know what they talking about. I don't know what they're talking about. Where's the science at? It's the war on terror. T-E-T-E-R-R-A. Terror. T-E-R-R-A. Not that stupid shit that they got you thinking that you're going to kill Saudis and uh, uh, niggas with turbans and whatnot. That was a fucking, that was a heroin war, first of all. That wasn't even a real war. That was a, 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 a that was a poppy field grab and an oil grab and, 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 and a gold grab. And all kind of precious metals out of Mesopotamia and goddamn Babylonia. That wasn't the war on terror. They created ISIS. They funded the Taliban. Nigga, please. Celestial. Astro astrological and galactic frequencies of the cosmos shower the earth and are another source of magnetic fields that informs one spirit. Niggas got a birthday, right? You ever read your birth chart? Did you see all of the influences that you have on your birth chart? My rising is Aries. Case in point, I got a warlike nature. My rising, I'm a Scorpio and my rising is Aries. That's Mars, nigga. That's war, right? So I'm lit. You know what I'm saying? Naturally. And I got a whole bunch of other things that are influencing me. It's not just the Scorpio in me. It's not just Pluto and it's not just Mars. It's a few other things. And I'm not going to disclose that because, you know, we don't do that. On That's private information. My birth chart is private. It's not for the public. You know what I mean? That's what that's an example of what I mean with public and private. Don't ever put your birth chart out there in the public. Motherfuckers could use that against you. So. 
every everything as above so below so the celestial magnetic influences in it 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 it, it it influences everything here, okay? It influences life on this planet, right? Indigenous cultures studied the cosmos and the magnetic imprint certain celestial objects had on the spirit and consciousness of humanity. The mag That's the key word, magnetic imprint. There are certain planets when there's a retrograde, there's a magnetic imprint on the consciousness of nature and the consciousness of man on the planet. That's ha that happens, right? When there's when there's alignments, when there's quote unquote um, full moons, right? Like like lunar. When there's a full moon, women, you know, that's when niggas go crazy. You know what I mean? They get the word lunatic and lunacy from the lunar cycles and whatnot. So women have been said to be influenced and to be affected by full moons and new moons and things of that nature, right? Niggas be howling and whatnot around my way when the moon is full. I don't know what's going on. So this is the root of astrology and other indigenous teachings of celestial objects and their corresponding influences on the earth, okay? So the third magnetic charge is ancestral. Principles of creation is energy never dies. It only transforms. The magnetic life force of a disincarnate human does not cease to exist after a person sheds their physical and emotional bodies as long as they're remembered. There is magnetic charge that animates their mental body and aligns their spirit, life force energy to remain magnetically attached to this reality. Translation, I said it before. I, I, I shared with the family that I did the MEO5 DMT, whatever the fuck that shit. I, nigga, I took the toad medicine, okay? I licked the frog, right? The shit that Mike Tyson talks about. I completely left my body, right? My ego died and I tapped into what is known as the all. The shit was not scary. It was the one of the it was one of the greatest adventures of my life. When I did that, I realized that when we quote unquote die, nigga, we not going nowhere. It's nothing wrong with dying. It's, that shit cured whatever remaining fears that I had of death. All right, I'll put a fucking gun to my head and, and help the nigga pull the trigger if that's what happens. Because there's nothing to be afraid of. I, I saw or I felt for that matter what's going on when you leave your body. And I'm here to let you know there's nothing to be afraid of. You're going to you're going to feel like it's, it's going to feel orgasmic. You're going to feel like you bust a thousand nuts, my nigga. You're going to feel great. OK, there's nothing. That's why people leave this planet or they leave their bodies with smiles on their faces because they get a glimpse of what that shit feels like because it is an orgasmic feeling. You know, when you're about to let it go, or my nigga, when, when the shit is coming down, you know, when it's coming down the tunnel and whatnot and you get that feeling, that's what that shit kind of feels like times 10. And then it only ex it, and it only rises to a higher vibration. So. If you remember or if you are remembered right like case in point let's use this example dr sabi right dr sabi is super lit on an ancestral plane because people are saying his name more than they were saying it when he was here nipsey hustle is super lit on the ancestral realm because more people are saying his name and they putting love and intentions into his spirit than they were when he was alive. He was underappreciated when he was alive. Okay. I know how it feels, my nigga. So welcome to the club. Right. He wasn't appreciated. Not to, not to the degree that niggas hopped on the bandwagon when he died. It's not about them calling him back. It's not about them calling him back. Where the fuck is he going? You know what I mean? Where, where does he have to go? Like, what is he got? He got. He has an album to make in a, in, a, in an afterlife. 
Nobody's calling nobody back. No, that he he's in the ancestral realm. And if you light a blue candle and put a blue bandana around that bitch and put a, a cup of water with his picture there, he could do some shit for you. When they kill the homies, when they kill the homies and niggas get the homies tattooed on them, them niggas are whoever the person is who gets the tattoo of the dead homie, they are a walking shrine. They become magnetized with the spirit of the dead homies. And they have first bids to make the to 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 summon the dead homies to do the motherfucking work for them. Yo, I'm about to go ride. I'm about to go slide on some niggas in your name. I need you to cloak me with uh, invisibility. I need you to make sure that I don't get locked up because I'm about to avenge your death. That's, you know what I mean? And there are people doing that all around the world as we speak right now. All right? Because they're honoring the motherfucking dead homies and they sliding for them. Not like Trey and Boys in the Hood. Not like that bird ass nigga that got out the car and went home and had shadow boxing in the air and whatnot with the fake ass crying. Oh, I can't. Oh. And he had a homegirl holding him and whatnot. No, not that type of demonstration. I'm talking about going in and putting in some work when a nigga put in work on one of the homies. So on an ancestral realm, right? On an ancestral realm, ro void of all of that morality that people are going to try to attribute about if it's right or wrong. No, Harambe code, nigga. Harambe code. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You take one of mine, we take two of yours. Well, I don't know what the fuck. What did y'all incarnate here to do? You know what I'm talking about? What are you here to do? What are you here to do? Make excuses and play games? Nigga, it's the code of Harambe. Every single nation that is in power, that has any kind of fucking respect or on a global scale, they practice that code. So what I'm saying is, that the spirit realm respects that code. What I'm saying is that the Santeria, the Palo Santo, the Palo Mayombe, all of these places, all of these spiritual practices, they respect that. Death before dishonor. I know if something happens to me, nigga, you better slide. You know what I mean? I don't want to, no, don't put up no spray paint mural and, oh, that's a fucking candle party and whatnot. Don't buy out all of the candles and, and start writing my name out in candles. No, nigga. You could save that candle money for lawyer money and go and slide. Okay, go slide. I don't want to hear nothing else. So, Dr. Sabi is mad lit. I, I can attribute to that, that he is working his magic from the ancestral realm because we are not forgetting about him. Nick Cannon is going to be blessed or blissed for that matter because he's edifying Dr. Sabi's work by doing what? By making a documentary and embossing him in the subconsciousness of African people globally. He's going to get spiritually rewarded for that. Everybody that participates in that demonstration will be spiritually rewarded for that. If you have somebody who you love and their story needs to be told, you I'm encouraging you to start either a crowdfunder or you should get funding and whatnot. And you should go ahead and you should make that happen because the most honorable thing that you could do for anybody who's an ancestor is to edify their name and to finish their work. Okay? That's what you do. So... <clears throat> So their mental bodies, right? Not their physical, their mind, their mental body is still attached to this realm. That's what ghosts are. That's what spirits are. That's why you have people who could talk to the quote unquote deceased because they have their mental bodies are still attached to this realm, even though their quote unquote physical body is not here. They have disincarnated, but their mental body can be contacted. So you could communicate with the energy. That's what divin that's what divining is. That's what divining is. That's when people throw stones or when people throw quote unquote bones and whatnot. They're divining on a quantum realm with the ancestors. 
Okay, that's when you get readings and whatnot, and somebody is telling you shit that you should, that they should not know that you only you and your grandmama know because your grandmother is here on the mental realm still, and she's communicating and she's trying to walk you through and she's trying to steer you in a direction to get you in a motherfucking alignment. Okay, so look. The strength of the magnetic charge of a disincarnate ancestor determines the potential that ancestor has to impact this reality, right? So the ones that are magnetically charged, that's why the European desecrates the dead. He desecrates the tombs. He desecrates Michael Jackson. He desecrates our ancestors. They desecrate Emmett, to Emmett Till's tomb because they are attacking the ancestors on the ancestral plane. It's all spiritual warfare. If they were all well remembered, buried in a magnetically charged fashion, and fed that ancestor and the ancestor gets fed beyond being a source of so let me rewind that if they are well remembered get your motherfucking loved ones names tatted on your neck nigga pay somebody to do a mural uh i don't know Get their personalized name on a license. I don't know. Whatever you got to do. Name your clothing line after them. Whatever you got to do, keep them alive. And it says if they are buried in a magnetically charged fashion. I'm going to just pause right here. I remember years ago, I went to Dr. Ben's funeral in a fucking church. And I was appalled. Calvin Butts Church. I was like, what the fuck is this? How is it in 2000, whatever that was, we are burying our ancestors in churches with Jesus on the wall and goddamn crosses. And these people are comedic master teachers. What the fuck is going on? How is that man not laid out in a, in a, in a, in a fashion of a sarcophagus? Where is the magnetic charge? Meaning when I make transition, my genius, copper breastplate. Copper bandana, copper cuffs. If you could get the gold, nigga, get it. But you're going to bury me magnetically. Align me with lapis lazuli. Align my tomb. Align my grave. Align wherever I'm buried with precious stones. Put all of your... Nigga, drop some stones in the casket. Okay? We have to be magnetically charged. That's why they're tomb raiders. That's why they robbed our tombs. That's why they excavated the tombs in Kemet. Why, if they are parading King fucking Tut around in a museum, somebody needs to smack the shit out of whoever's doing that because they are desecrating your ancestors. They're supposed to keep them in the tomb. Nothing's supposed to be removed because when those, when those, when those entities were inside of the pyramids or when those entities were inside of the burial mounds, they were magnetically charging the whole ionosphere around them. So now they burying niggas in pine boxes with Bibles and whatnot with fucking suits, no magnetic charge, nothing but a goddamn wooden box. And we worry and we wonder why the ancestors is not working for us no more. You don't even know how to bury your dead. You don't even know how to bury your fucking dead anymore. They took, it's not like somebody could take something from you. Nigga, read a book. It's one line that I read. I, it said that. We need to be buried in a magnetically charged fashion. You don't need no fucking degree to figure that one out. So when they excavated the mounds, they were removing skeletal remains that had copper breastplates. They had copper amulets. These are in America. I'm not just talking about Kemet. I'm talking about when they excavated the mounds in America, the Smithsonian Institute, the um, the Cincinnati, the, the Society of Cincinnati and whatnot. When, and Cincinnati stands for Seven Hills. I'm going to get to that in a minute. And Seven Hills harkens to Rome. It harkens to the design of Rome. Rome having seven hills. All of these places mimicking Rome. That's why America is called the New Rome. I'm going to get to that. So we have to begin to bury our ancestors. If, if one of the homies died inside of his pockets, 
put silver, put copper, put gold, align them with stones, align them with precious stones, amethyst, quartz, lapis lazuli, uh, uh, you know, you name it. You name it. And I promise you that is going to increase the magnetic charge, especially if they're a powerful ancestor whose work needs to be completed on this planet. We should begin to inter some of our ancestors, meaning redig them up, bring them back. The Marcus Garveys and whatnot, the Noble Dralis, bring them back, bring them back and properly bury them, properly bury them, put the right material inside of their tombs. That's why the Europeans go inside of our, we have grave sites that were known to be enchanted grave sites. We have grave sites that the goddamn UNESCO uh, uh, made um, landmarks because they were called enchanted grave sites. And these crackers be inside of them graves. They were tomb raiding the graves. They were robbing the graves of what? Of all of the precious metals, of all of the stones, these crackers be all in the fucking caves, digging and pulling out all of these big geodes of stones and whatnot. That's your shit. And inside of those caves were ancestors who were in turn. They were buried inside of the caves. But the Europeans will come up with amethyst. They'll come up with all of these stones and then they got the nerve to sell them back to you. Huh. The nerve. The audacity, the unmitigated gall of these people and the shit that they do against the people who are not well versed in what the fuck is going on. The people perish for a lack of knowledge and they're running over us because of the lack of knowledge that we have. Motherfuckers got us looking all over the place, but we're not focusing on this magical land called America, Northwest of Mexico, that we all that we all, our ancestors is inside of this fucking ground. This is your land. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. This your shit. This your shit. Activate the grid. Activate this land. Bring this shit back. Make America great again. Make this motherfucking grid a great again. Make the, make the grid great again. Make the grid great again. We got to recharge this shit. We're starting out by doing this live stream. Because like I said, we are mentally, the first magnetic charge is in the mind. So mentally, we are all becoming, we are all getting online. As I'm online, you online. Because I'm going to make sure whoever listens to this, you're going to get charged up. I'm going to make sure we get the, the divine spark tonight. I'm going to make sure that we are going to get charged. Get your fucking stones or whatever you need, but we're going to charge up. And then after that, we could focus on how we gonna turn these we gonna turn these mounds back on, all right? How we gonna turn this earth back on? How are we going to get this magnetic charge? I just showed you. Hold on, let me finish this. This is the this is the this one right here is big. If they were well remembered, right? So we cannot forget our ancestors. I don't have any tattoos. But I'm thinking about getting all of my ancestors tatted on my arm. My grandma, Grandma Esteli Nesbitt, Lloyd Thomas, my grandfather, Ralph Moreland, you know, um, my uncle, Uncle Paul, Paul Moreland, Nicole, his daughter, Nicole Moreland, all of my family who's in the ancestral realm. I would, I never, I, I, I say their names every time I do my, and my, when, my when I'm by my altar and whatnot, but... I'm I'm feeling imp I'm feeling impelled to put them on my body so they're never forgotten cuz that's important. So if they're well remembered, they're magnetically charged and they're fed, you got to feed them. Key point, and they're fed. Right? I speak about this often. We're not feeding the ancestors. We're not feeding them. <laughs> They, they, they got appetites. We got to feed them. That ancestor beyond being a source of intuitive information. Intuitive information is when you just chilling and you get an idea. That's a billion dollar idea. You just chilling and you get a bar. That's a fucking bar bar. You get a hook. 
Like I usually get hooks when I'm waking up. Like when I'm in between sleep state and wake state, I be getting bars and shit. I be getting hooks. And then when I wake up, I try to write it down and it, it just disappears. It goes away because I can't hold on to it. But that's intuition raining down on me. That's the ancestors raining manna. That's, that's, that's the download. That's the download in the wake state. So not only would they be a source of intuitive information, they will be a force through which we can use to consciously interact, control, and manipulate the magnetic field surrounding them. So through the terrestrial, right, the earth being grounded, being in nature, tapping into the earth, going places where it does your DNA good. Miami, the land of flowers, it does my body good. Georgia, Atlanta, does my body good. Uh, California, um, uh, Khalifa, it does my body good, right? So that my, my mag, the magnetic field in those places are feeding my DNA. It's feeding my magnetic field. It's leveling me up. The celestial, I'm in alignment with the solar eclipses. I'm in alignment with the lion's gate. I, I went ahead and I tapped into the lion's gate on 888. That's when I did the motherfucking toad and whatnot. So my celestial, I'm in alignment with the, stereo, the Sirius star systems, my nigga. I'm in alignment with Mars. I'm obeying my planetary influence because I, I let that shit run through me. You know what I'm talking about? I, I'm not suppressing my energies. Ancestral. I give it up for my ancestors. You know what I mean? I, I I need to do more for them. But I give it up to my ancestors. And I honor my master teachers, Dr. Ben, Dr. Sabi, Dr. Francis Crest Wilson, Dr. Delbert Blair. I make sure that their names are not forgiven. I continuously say their names. Dr. Henry Clark. You understand? Dr. Ivan Van Sertima. You know what I mean? C. Freeman L. Steve Coakley. All of the all of the ancestors, all of the legends, we put their names out there so we make sure that they're never forgotten and we will fucking ride for them. OK, we will ride for them. We will not let them be forgotten. We will not let them get pushed to the side. We will not let these fugazi ass niggas who are coming around swagger jacking, you know what I mean? Running with their cloth and whatnot. We won't let that shit rock. You know what I'm talking about? We won't let it rock. They're never forgotten. So we're going to use, we're going to utilize uh, Marcus Garvey. I put their name on the clothes, Noble Drew Ali, so I could walk like a billboard and motherfuckers would be like, who's Garvey? I seen somebody on the train the other day Googling Marcus Garvey because I had the Garvey on. Keep their names alive. Keep their motifs, keep their iconography alive. Those are our saints. Okay, so they manipulate in the magnetic field for me. They make shit move when I need it to move. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Listen to this. Ancestral potential to influence this reality. Ancestors are a quantum variable in the quantum reality. The quantum realms involves that continuous point in space time where particles and electrons impact our manifested reality. What is considered luck, chance, and circumstance and fate are not random. Fate usually manifests from a quantum reality that is influenced by the unseen. Quantum ancestral forces. The strength of an ancestor's magnetic potential determines the degree they can influence the quantum reality that their posterity manifests. Therefore, strong ancestral forces tend to create luck or fortunate synchronistic moments. Translation. Translation. That the ancestors are the quantum realm. That the ancestors are in the quantum realm. That the ancestors are are part of what is called quantum entanglement. So what the Europeans are doing, because Google 
just put out an article that they reached quantum supremacy with the computers that they have, the quantum computers. And they have what is called the D-Wave computer in Canada. And they got other computers that are quantum that China and other people are developing. But what they're doing with the quantum, with the Higgs bison and whatnot, with the large hologram collider, is that they're tapping in to the unseen. They're tapping into dark matter. What is that? That is the ancestor realm. Okay? So... When you dealing with computers, right? When you dealing with anything computer or computational, you are dealing with what is known as zeros and ones. Computer language is zeros and ones, right? Zeros and ones are part of the quote unquote quantum realm. All right. But the quantum realm takes that shit a bunch further. Zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, zero. And it can change from zero to one to zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. It's crazy, right? That there is the ancestral realm. That is the realm of, that's, that's divination. That's when you go and you see the divination man and he throws the bones. Or you say, yo, zero and one is yes and no. Yo, is that bitch cheating on me? Throw, throw the pennies, my nigga. Huh. Yeah, she's cheating on you. You know what I'm talking about? That's, that's, that's the quantum. You know what I mean? That's tapping into the divination. And the divination system is the zero and ones that the computers use. But what they're creating in quantum computers is furthering the zeros and ones. So our ancestors and our D de and the deities who are quote unquote the 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 the, the, the you know uh, uh Shango, um Alegba, um all of them are in the quantum realm. They are in the quantum realm. So you got to be able to tap into the quantum realm. And you got to be able to, like when somebody gets mounted, when somebody gets mounted by a deity or a spirit, that spirit is coming from where? It's coming out of the quantum realm. Even when the, in, even, even demonic entities, even the demonic entities that they, br they bring forth and whatnot and that they summon up. Those are coming from a quantum realm. Okay? So, there's no such thing as luck. That's your ancestors working for you. You niggas at the dice game. You have you on a crap table in Vegas. You you ever had a hot hand in CeeLo? Blue Pill used to have a real hot hand. My hand is kind of hot, but his was hotter. You know what I mean? That wasn't luck, my nigga. That wasn't luck of the draw. When you got a hot hand, when you when you lit with the scratch offs, when you always like Copper Mike, Copper Mike uh, is is he's lit with the lotto numbers. He's a lotto genius. He cracked the code. He's tapping in to the ancestors. He's tapping into an ancestor that's very close to him that is making that shit happen. Okay, the movie Interstellar with Matthew McConaughey. He showed they showed you that. They showed you the they showed you they showed you an aspect of what the quantum realm is about. When he was basically he he was able to go through the time space continuum and go back into the quote unquote reality where his daughter was grown up and whatnot. So I don't want to lose y'all by getting too deep and whatnot. But there's no such thing as luck. There's no such thing as chance. It's called probabilities and possibilities, and this is all quantum. All right. And there's no luck and there's no chance. You want to tap into... That's why the Asians are fucking legends in Las Vegas. The Asians go to Vegas and clean them out. They are intuitively tapped into their ancestors. They practice all of that. They're tapped into the quantum realm. They're not going there with luck. They're going there with the fucking kitten that goes like this. And the goddamn Buddha. You know what I mean? That's why when you go into all of their stores, they got the little kitten that goes like this. They got some water. They have a fucking shrine. When you go into the Indians with the red dot, they got a shrine tucked away somewhere with latch me and all of them. All of them are dealing with the quantum realm magic. So the spiritual technology of the mounds, the global mound matrix. Mounds are an indigenous spiritual technology. Spirit is life force energy. Technology is the art and science of creating tools to make life better. I'm going to repeat that. Technology is the art and science of creating tools to make life better. Mounds are an indigenous spiritual technology designed to amplify and augment magnetic life force spirit energy into the environment. I'm going to repeat that again. Mounds 
mounds are an indigenous spiritual technology designed to amplify and augment magnetic life force spirit energy into the environment. Mounds simultaneously connect with all three of the magnetic spirit life forces. The terrestrial, the celestial, and the ancestral. Okay? Mounds tend to be played. And all of this is from here. All right? All of this is from this book. www.rossbin.com Mounds tend to be placed on ley lines and gravitomagnetic nodal points to tap Earth's magnetic field. To augment the connections, mounds also tend to be aligned with magnetic north-south po uh, poles as well. Because of this placement of mounds does not appear random. Mounds form a geometric grid around the globe that mirrors Earth's magnetic nodes and ley lines. Collectively, these mounds form a worldwide grid that we call that we call the global mound matrix. Yes, 1111. Put the intentions out there. Mounds also tend to be aligned with astrological star formations. Stars or celestial bodies associated with a mound will often make an observable alignment during rising, midday, or setting suns of an equinox or a solstice. Mounds may even be formed in a shape, proportion, and or angular position that mirrors a celestial object embodying a principle of creation. As above, so below. This celestial alignment mirroring allows the mound to magnificently tap the magnetic imprint of that celestial object. Follow me, family. I'm going slow. I don't want to lose anybody. Mounds tend to be sepulchral and ancestral burial grounds. Mounds being magnetically charged from the earth and sky were seen by indigenous as a magnetically charged place to bury the deceased. As such, it was natural for the indigenous innately connected to an ancestral mound to be able to connect to ancestors through the environment's magnetic field. Moreover, the ancestors' magnetic charge tended to be magnified and magnificent. Thus, their influence within the environment was impactful. Translation. The ancestors, the indigenous ancestors, the copper-toned and the, the, the black people, the, the copper-toned indigenous mound builders of America, Northwest of Mexico, right? who they call Negroes, coloreds, and niggas. And then they call them African-Americans and blacks. And now they're calling themselves Eidos. These people were so intelligent and so wise that they buried their ancestors in these ancestral mounds, right? Because mounds are earth, they're earthworks, right? They're earthworks. They're like pyramids built out of dirt or pyramids, not dirt, earth. It's not dirt. If you live in Atlanta, you got red clay. That's not dirt, my nigga. If you see a mound that's built as big as a fucking mountain, that's not dirt. That's soil, right? Soil, mud. They got, they got precious stones all inside of it. You know what I mean? It's an earth. It's called an earth work. And yes, they call them moors in Britain. In the UK, the name of those are called moors. Right? Facts. Talk black to me. Yeah, clay. They got clay. You know what I mean? They got earth. It's earthen. It's earthen material that compromise. And mud gets rock hard. Yes, clay, stone, and things of that. It's not dirt. 
So inside of those things, they will bury the ancestors. So now when these indigenous people are tapping into nature or they want to they want to they want to make it rain and whatnot or they want to bring the sun out or they want to have fertile land or they want to plant and they want agriculture to pop the the, the the natural environment was in alignment with their intentions because their ancestors were strategically and scientifically placed in the right places to make shit like that charge. They were magnetically, they were creating magnetic fields by burying them and erecting these burial mounds. They did not, they did not have graves. They did not have coffins and shit like that. They had burial mounds. Okay. <clears throat> Mound building is ancient tradition. Antediluvian and pre-flood. It's a global phenomenon. It's everywhere. It's not just the Americas. It's everywhere. It's in the, it's in the, um, it's in the, whatchamacallit, it's in Africa. The Dogons was doing it. It's in Haiti and places like that. It's in North America, South America, Central America. It's in the Caribbean, my nigga. Somebody said somebody said Zimbabwe Zimbabwe world was on a big mound. Yeah, my nigga. Hmm. So it's estimated to be 13 to 15,000 years old. Focus though, the focus today tonight is not on the pre-flood mounds. It's on the post-flood mounds. OK, so we're focusing on the post flood mound builders of North America and their legacy as it relates to historical indigenous of colonial times. Mississippi mound builders, probably descendants of the Olmecs who moved north from Omeka, original cities, San Lorenzo, La Venta, the Gulf of Mexico, in or around the Mexican state of Tabasco. The surviving text of the Mayans, the Chilim Balam, they talk about the mound builders. Because remember, the Indians, the, the quote unquote red Indians, the five dollar Indians or the red Indians, the tribe that, 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 that we are familiar with, like Tonto and all of them. They said that they don't know where the fucking mounds came from. They said that they were there when they got there. They, the mounds preceded them. So. Mounds built over a period of 1,500 years. It took approximately 262 years to construct one mound. 120,050 mounds were the numbers constructed. All over the land, from the sea to the base of the land, they created names for them. They're considered the race who built the mounds or what is called the lost race. And they're written, no written, they didn't have no written history. The only thing that they erected were monuments consisting of mountains, enclosures, and implements. Okay? Their works are in great numbers in Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Illinois, Wisconsin, Missouri, Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. They are found less in North and South Carolina, Western New York, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Michigan, Iowa, and Mexican territory. Is that not the motherfucking roll call? Is that not the roll call? Every single roll call. You could go back and listen to all of the Melanin Mondays and Third Eye Thursdays. These states that I just named... That be the niggas in the motherfucking building in the roll call when I call out the states. Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Illinois, Wisconsin, Missouri, Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, North and South Carolina, Western New York, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Michigan, Iowa, Mexico. So there are two types of mounds, right? There's not one type. There's two types of mounds. 
there are enclosures and there's mounds. So enclosures are defensive. They're usually defensive and sacred. Usually on alluvial plains where two or more rivers converge, right? The advantages of building mounds where two rivers converge is if fishing and agriculture are flourishing where two rivers converge. And also that's for traveling. That's, to, that's, for, that's the benefit of traveling. There are three types of mounds. Temple mounds, sepulchral mounds, and symbolical mounds. Examples, serpent mounds in Ohio or mammoth mound in Wisconsin. Um, the sepulchral mounds are, are ones that act as burial grounds, contain mound building skeletal remains and relics. The temple mounds are sacred spaces where ceremonies are conducted. So there are three types of mounds, right? You have symbolical mounds. Me and Blue Pill went to Serpent Mound in Ohio. And that's where we began our mound journey. That's where we began. This was in 2010, I believe. And we 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 got we got charged. We got charged. Our our DNA got went on, it got turned online, my nigga. Like we was lit before that, but after that visit to Serpent Mound, and it rained on us too. We brought our we brought our precious we brought all our stones and buried our stones and charged them up. Nigga, everything changed from that point. We 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 became online, nigga. We went on we we got turned online. Then we would go to the Etowah Mounds in Georgia, right outside of Atlanta and Cartersville, like an hour outside of Atlanta. There are sacred mounds in Etowah. We went there and we were doing rituals and ceremonies and that had us charged up. Okay. So that is what is called at the, that that's referred to symbolical mounds. Then you have the burial mounds. Then you have what is known as ceremonial mounds. Okay. They're all shapes. They usually range from six to 30 feet in perpendicular height and 40 to 100 feet in diameter at the base, but they could range from 90 feet in height, covering several acres at their base, okay? There's a book by J.P. McLean, M-A-C-L-E-A-N, called The Mound Builders. Go and see if you can find it online. Put it in Google with .pdf at the end of it and see if it comes up. J.P. McLean, okay? So, in certain mounds, they found remains of woolly mammoths and the mastodons were found amongst the remains in excavated mounds. Okay, woolly mammoths, my niggas. The monarch of all mounds is the Chicoya in Illinois. It was a group of 60 structures, parallelogram, parallelogram with each side at the base 700 and 500 feet. Okay, the whole area six acres and the summit platform was 200 by 450 feet Ohio alone there were 13,000 mounds and enclosures within 15 miles from the Illinois River there was 5,000 mounds situated between two rivers converging the Indians uh, the Indians built mounds in reverence so the Indians who came later they also built mounds basically in reverence to the great mounds that they encountered when they were in the Americas, so they got their versions of mounds as well, but that's not the original mounds. They that's almost like somebody coming along and building, you know, uh, pyramids in in reverence to the pyramids that were already built. Okay, so let's get into what is known as the mound gritters. Right, the mound gritters are the tomb raiders, the raiders of the lost ark. The mound gritters and their purpose is working to control and captivate the mind and the spirit of humanity in the name of Rome. This organization collective are aware of the significance of the global mound matrix and the impact on human consciousness. This is how niggas got put to sleep. This is how the spells are being cast on these cities that are murder capitals, on these cities that are welfare states, on these cities that are being gentrified, on these cities where niggas are walking around dead. 
In order to magnetically impel and inform the mind of others, manipulate emotions and behavior, mound gritters occupy indigenous mounds. Occupation involves destroying many of the mounds and leaving a few. The remaining mounds become the place of significant architectural structures of various sorts that are erected, like water towers, like churches, like landfills, like energy centers. Mound gritters manifest their will. Hold on. Okay, mound gritters manifest their will upon those within the broadcast range of their magnetically charged intentions. So what the mound gritters do, right, is they are usurping the original purpose of these original of these indigenous mounds and they're manifesting their will. Do what thou wilt. They're putting their intention, they're putting their will into these quote unquote sacred mounds. Okay? Mound gritters. No, G R I D D E R. Gritters. G R I D D is in dog. D D E R. Many founding fathers of the USA mastered control over the indigenous mounds of this region through identifying and occupying indigenous mounds and manipulating the North American mound matrix. Occupying indigenous mounds and manipulating mound matrix prevents the indigenous from fully connecting with spirit and thus their minds are easier to impel, trigger emotions and manipulate behavior. Okay. Manipulated mound matrix Indigenous mental magnetic field is incongruent with the magnetized manifested reality. The manipulated mound matrix will manifest the will of the mound gritter. The result for the indigenous is disillusion and delusion. Disillusion thoughts magnetize toxic, unproductive emotions. Toxic emotions fed by disillusion, tend to express as self-destructive, undoing, and unproductive behavior. Sound familiar? Sound familiar? A magnetically repulsive charge is thus attached to the indigenous, to the indigenous, if not discharged through grounding and sustained reconnection with natural magnetic sources, the indigenous will demagnetize his or her magnetic hold will diminish and cancel. No, his or her magnetic field will diminish and cancel. Dwindle slowly, devitalizing sick living dead or cancel in a flash. Your eating habits and your food choices only make it worse. Translation. Translation. Because of the interference with the natural magnetic fields around now think about this think about this in the 1800s after slavery before the building of all of these highways before the building of all of these quote unquote before the building of uh these highways, before the building of all of these projects, before the quote unquote redlining or whatever the fuck took place, our people were out here inventing shit. Our people were out here manifesting things. Look at the 100 plus inventors fresh out of slavery in the 1800s, right? They were tapped into what is known they would tap into, right, something that was great. They would tap into 
a magnetic charge that was doing what? They was allowing them to envision. They were allowing them to visualize. They were allowing them to materialize. They were allowing them to manifest. They were allowing them to fucking create. I'm talking about create to the point where they were just spilling creations out of their minds. What happened? What happened? Niggas is like, oh, Jim Crow, Jim Crow. Nigga, if Jim Crow could stop you from creating or oh, the patent office, that's what happened. No, nigga, that's a cop out. Do your fucking homework. It's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. So these are, this is what would identify a mound gritter. This is what, these are the, these are the telltale signs of a mound gritter. So you could know who is a mound gritter and who is not. Okay. Because there's a science behind that. The mound gritters were able to identify an indigenous mound. That's one of the tenets of the mound builders. That the mound gritters, pardon me. They were I they were able to identify, like how you have Indiana Jones and he had the map, or you got Tomb Raider and they have the secret map, and they're able to go places and find things, and they're able to identify certain things. That's what you have. As a mound gritter, that was that's one of the tenets of them. They were able to survey, mark, and chart connecting ley lines extending from the mound. Have you ever seen the depiction of the Europeans being surveyors of the land? Anybody that's out there who is a surveyor, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, they were able to chart. They were able to survey. They were able to mark the connecting ley lines that were extending from the mounds. Then. Another another tell another identification of the mound gritters are they were able to harness the magnetic fields circulating at that point for their will. Okay, they were able to harness the magnetic fields circulating at that point for their quote unquote will. Where is my moderators? I need my moderators to moderate. Okay. Rosicrucian order. Known as the, the Society of Cincinnati. Okay. These are the two orders. These are the two groups that gave birth or basically rolled out or where some of the world's uh, or some of North America's most um, successful mound gritters came out of. Right. The Society of Cincinnati. Cincinnati translates to the seven hills. The seven hills are indicative of the Roman Empire. OK, it's indicative of the ancient Byzantine Roman Empire, not the Roman Empire where the Holy See is, not that Rome. The Roman Empire that I'm talking about is the Byzantine Empire in Constantinople. OK, that aspect, the Roman Empire, that went and became what you know now today as Russia. All right. After the Turks basically sacked Constantinople and made it Istanbul, the new Rome that rose up is what you know now as Kiev Rus, which is Russia, where they practice Greek orthodoxy and they practice a form of Christianity that goes against Western European Christianity. That's the that's what I'm talking about. Okay? You got to you have to understand the difference between those different factions cuz that that plays a big part into what it is that we're teaching. Okay? Mother Russia, that's right here. Yeah. Mother Russia, the new that's the third incarnation of Rome, nigga. That's the new Rome. Okay? That's the new Rome. Mother Russia. Okay? So, the Sons of Liberty, right? The Sons of Liberty. Founding Fathers, right? The, fa the Founding Fathers, one of the lodges, or what they will also call, were the Sons of Liberty. They belonged to a lodge 
called the Green Dragon Tavern in Boston. Okay, one of the first Masonic lodges, the Green Dragon Tavern of Boston. This is where your mound gritters come from. Okay, this is where your quote unquote. Mound gritters come from. Right? There's a family called the Adams family. Right? And I don't know if the TV show picked up the TV show, The Adams Family, based off of The Adams Family. But when you do the knowledge, about who the Adams family is and the significance that they had in destroying and subjugating indigenous people on this planet, then you will understand why the Adams family on TV was a horror family. They were dealing with, you know, all kind of occultism. So the first Adam that we're talking about is Henry Adams. All right. He's called the dragon from Devonshire. OK, he is called the dragon from Devonshire. Henry Adams, who was born in 18, 1583 and died in 1646. He's the founder of New England and the founder of Boston. OK. He lived at Mount Wollaston. All right. Which is called the Mount. It's 40 acres of land. He lived on a mount called Mount Wollaston. His son. John Adams, he's the first national mound gritter. He wrote the Declaration of Independence. He was the first vice president of the USA, of George Washington was the president, and he is the second US president of the USA. He lived on Rich Mound, Richmond Hill, near Greenwich Village in New York City and Manhattan, okay? All of these mound gritters live on mounds, they all put their residence on top of mounds. They all took mounds, sacred mounds, and they put their residence and they put their quote unquote living quarters on top of these sacred mounds. So your boy, John Adams, lived on Richmond Hill, which is translated to Rich Mound Hill in Greenwich Village, Greenwich Village, New York City and Manhattan. OK. And the other Adams is John. OK, so what John Adams did is he expanded the canals. He expanded the roads and he tracked and he gritted the mound structures throughout the nations. He established a pattern of affixing U.S. cities on top of these mounds. All right. So he was in control of basically he's the president. So he's in control. Now he has the map. So he's in control of building canals, building tunnels, I mean, building roads and all of these through these mounds, excavating the mounds, desecrating the mounds, getting rid of certain mounds and building cities on top of the mounds. All right. So then his son is John Quincy Adams. He becomes the sixth president. He occupied what is known as Meridian Hill, and that's the central mound in Washington, D.C., okay? Meridian Hill, right? So he was known, and, and then that's the Adams family, all right? Do your, uh, you know, we'll, like I said, this is only notes for the lecture that we're doing on the first. The lecture on the first is going to have visuals of all of this. I'm just reading through some notes just to give you a primer of what it is that we're bringing to the table in this dissertation because it's not just going to focus on this. It's going to go into a lot more deeper stuff. So Thomas Jefferson, right, who was said to have Meridian Mound Madness, all right, Meridian Mound Madness. He lived in Monticello, which translates to Little Mound, and that is Virginia, all right? He built it on top of a mound. He conducted scientific strategographic excavation of mounds, stripping them back layer by layer, right? Stripping them back layer by layer, okay? 
he renamed a mound to Meridian Hill, right? And he proposed the longitude of this mound, which was 77 degrees at, uh, at 2711 West from the Greenwich Prime Meridian. And he proposed that that become the prime meridian for the new nation in the world. All right. So the first six presidents, I'm going to just show you how these are all mound gritters and they were tapping into the indigenous mound energy of the global mound matrix. This is a list of the six residents of the first six presidents. George Washington, Mount Vernon, Virginia, Mount Vernon. All right. That's a mound. John Adams, the second president, Rich Mound, New York, Thomas Jefferson, Monticello, which is Little Mound, James Madison, Montpelier, Virginia, which is Pilgrim's Mound, right? James Monroe, Monroe Hill, right? Virginia, he's in Monroe Hill. So anytime you see hill, anytime you see mount, nigga, that's a mound, right? So James Monroe is in Monroe Hill, Virginia. And the sixth president is John Quincy Adams, and he's in Meridian Hill, D.C., which is also a mound. OK, so I'm going to end it on that for the notes. Right. And we're just going to say, go and click on the description, the link in the description. It might not be at this moment, but when we finish the show, the description will be in the link for the Eventbrite. So you could go and get your tickets so you could get more information about what is going on and what has been going on. And what these people have implemented to put our people in a complete, a complete sunken state. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, they, they, they have uh, Hiram Abiff in his shallow grave. And now we have an understanding as to how that is being done. They are manipulating the magnetic fields all around us. That's why I said last show, I was like, Yo, it feels like when you go into certain cities that there's a spell on that city. Like you could feel a spell. You could feel the thickness of ignorance. You could feel death in the air. You could just feel it. You could feel, you could look at the people and tell that they're in a stupor. Something on a higher level. This is higher principalities. This is spiritual warfare. This is not meant, this is not physical war. This spiritual war. This spiritual war. You know what I'm talking about? This is spiritual war, you know? And we have to take heed. Like I said, they got Columbus's statues all around America. Nigga, that's spiritual warfare. They put these statues on ley lines. They put these monuments on ley lines. You got to put your shit on a ley line. You got to start building on your meridians. You got to start building on your ley lines. You got to start building on your energy centers. You have to identify them. You know? You got to identify them. Okay? That's a fact. Because ain't nothing going to change. Niggas is bobbing for a check. Ain't nothing going to change until you change what the fuck is going on on this magnetic grid. We got to wake the grid up. We got to do more work. We got to lay them. We, we got to we got to we got to really put in some work. You know. <laughs> Wilmington, Hellaware. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you. How the ley lines, the parallels, how these ley lines go through all of these different states. All of these states with these bodies of waters. All of these states that had these ancient mounds. All of these states that are laying on certain kind of parallels. Certain meridians and things of that nature. 
the people are being affected. <laughs> people are being affected. I promise you. So with that being said, I'm going to let y'all enjoy the rest of your nights. You understand? I want to thank everybody for their participation. I think we put in about a good hour. I mean, a good three hours, maybe. I don't know how long it was tonight, but there's about 700 plus people in the building. Uh, I appreciate every single one of you. You know what I'm talking about? 